Hey guys, what is up? It's your girl, Grace Tori, and I am back with a whole new podcast episode. We are going to be talking about glowing up your health and fitness. This is part two of our glow up series. On our last episode, we talked about building the foundation of how to glow up by shifting your mindset. So if you are interested in hearing that before you click into this, that is the last episode on whatever platform you're currently listening or watching on. So I highly recommend listening to that first. If you're not feeling like listening to that right now, no worries, you can listen to these in no particular order. So let's go ahead and jump on in. I'm Grace Story, and you're listening to That Girl the Podcast. Grab a beverage of choice and settle in, because the new episode is starting now. All right, guys. So like I mentioned today, we are talking about how to glow up your health and fitness. So all things like physical health and then fitness and anything that revolves around that. So I have 19 tips that I got from all over the internet, did my own research that I'm going to share with you guys so that you get the best tips to help you glow up your health and fitness. We're going to be implementing these together. So if you want to see how I do that and join the community of women, don't forget to follow my Instagram and TikTok that are linked down below. But other than that, don't forget to follow on whatever platform you're on if you enjoy this type of content and share with the bestie who you think also enjoys this content. But other than that, that's really it. We are going to dive into these tips. So the first one we are jumping right in is to set or plan those doctor's appointments you keep putting off. I'm right there with you, girly. Like, I'm blind. I'm literally blind. I have my contacts in right now, but they are the wrong prescription because it's been way too long since I've gone to the eye doctor, and I need to schedule that. I've just been putting it off, so don't forget to do that, your physical, all those important things. Stop putting it off if you have the financial means to go, because I know things are a little crazy right now. Definitely go and get those taken care of. You can't glow up if you are not physically your best self in a health standpoint. So make sure we are taking care of ourselves, going to the doctor and getting everything we need to make ourselves the best version from a healthy standpoint. So that's number one. Number two is make sure you're drinking water, like a lot of water. I am setting the bar low because I don't drink enough water. I'm trying to do one liter a day and then I wanna get up to one gallon a day, but Rome wasn't built in a day, so we're starting with that one liter. So I highly recommend doing that. If you want like a good cup and you are near a five below, they have the best workout drinking water cups. I live for those and then I just have like a water pitcher that filters water when you put it in there and that's my chosen method. I wish that I had like a better option at work to like have water but you know we're getting there one step at a time. I just need to fill up a bigger water bottle and take a bigger water bottle with me so that's like my plan but definitely make sure you're drinking water. It can change your life. I know that we all talk about it and it's like so cliche but the difference when I'm drinking enough water for like what I should be in a day versus when I'm not. I feel like a whole new person. All of my symptoms or things that have been bothering me magically disappear. So make sure you're drinking water. You cannot glow up if you are hella dehydrated every day. Get up earlier, another cliche, but it makes such a big difference. The difference between getting up at seven and getting up 6.45 is like extremely astronomical for me because I'm not rushing. I have a few moments to just like plan my day or meditate or sit on the couch. I can drink an extra water, like a whole cup before I even leave the house. I can hang out with my animals. It's huge, like definitely get up earlier. I'm working towards getting up even earlier and just working my way back and doing it in like 15 minute increments. So one week I'll do 6.45 and then next week I'm gonna do 6.30 and slowly work my way back so that I have enough time to not only vibe and get ready, but I don't feel rushed, I can take my time. And if, if I plan everything out the day before, which you should be doing, like laying out your clothes and stuff, we talked about that in the last episode, then you really have all that free time to cook breakfast or do whatever you need to do and just take it slow because how you get up in the morning and how you set that morning routine is the tone of how your day is going to go. So if you're rushing, things aren't going right, you can't find what you're planning to wear that day, things get really bad really fast and that sets a bad tone for the rest of your day. So make sure you're getting up early and planning things. Stretch and do yoga. This is something that is another cliche. A lot of these are cliches, but a lot of them also aren't. So we're going to get into the deeper ones, I promise. But stretching is so good for you. Doing yoga is so good for you, not just from a mental state, but it helps your body just stretch, get those muscles going, keep you flexible. 
calm you down. It's such a good practice for so many reasons. So make sure you are stretching and taking it a step further and doing yoga if that's your thing. But doing some sort of type situation that is similar to stretching or yoga is going to give you so many benefits. I like to do it in the morning and at night. I am not super consistent with it, so it's more about doing it consistently for me instead of just doing it period. But stretching and yoga are going to glow up your routine almost instantly. I also want to have a little bit of a disclaimer I forgot to mention earlier. You don't have to do every single one of these. Obviously, they are so many, so it's a lot to implement at once. But definitely implement the ones that are more interesting to you the more you implement the better but it's not like a do all or do none like if you don't do all of them your life isn't going to improve like just take from this what resonates with you and the more you do probably the better you're going to feel the quicker your life is going to turn around and glow up so it's really up to you be active daily this is an addition to stretch and yoga i'm not telling you to go do a full workout routine every single day but take your dog for a walk maybe you just go for a walk walk around your workplace on a break. Just make sure that you're doing something and not just sitting in the same place every day and not really getting any sort of activity. It's bad for you. It keeps you from reaching goals. It makes you more tired, keeps you from releasing more of that serotonin and endorphins that come with being active. Just make sure you're doing some sort of activity every day. Again, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It doesn't have to be running an, an extreme amount. It's just getting active and making sure that you are exercising your body at least a little bit every single day. Take supplements. This is one that you should definitely talk to your doctor about and I have sang these praises every single time I have like done an episode similar to this, but make sure that you're taking supplements where you are missing them. So I knew what supplements I needed to take because I had my blood drawn and they told me where I was low in things. So for me, I'm specifically very low in vitamin D and B12. So I take those. Fish oil is a good like one to take in general. Uh, what else do I take? I think magnesium possibly. I need to like look, but there are a lot of good things that you can take that are going to increase your mood. You, you're going to feel better because you're possibly missing them in your diet. It's just like a good practice. Like I said, definitely consult with your doctor and see what supplements are best for you personally. But I had noticed a huge difference as soon as I started taking supplements and they are so good for you, especially if you're eating a lot of like processed food or you're eating out a lot, you're probably not getting a lot of the nutrients that you need and that may be why you feel not 100% if you do feel that way. So definitely look into that. Going along with that, we are cooking and eating at home more. We want to get all those nutrients. It's so just like relaxing for me personally. It's a way to kind of hang out with my boyfriend and my dogs and stay out of bed, stay off the couch because I'm like active and moving around. And it's just like a love language for me. But in general, you are so much healthier when you cook and eat at home. I'm someone who definitely believes that the energy that someone puts into your, their food when they're preparing it can definitely be transferred to you. So if you're eating food from someone who cooked it in the back of a kitchen of a big restaurant, they may have been a little bit more stressed. They may not have put all of that love and intention that you would have put into it if you were cooking it at home. Also, you don't know if the ingredients that they're using have been processed way more than you would like. You don't know if they're organic. You don't know any of those things. Whereas if you cook yourself, you get to choose exactly what you're putting in there. You know exactly what you're putting into your body. And it just makes you more aware. So cooking and eating at home is a huge way to glow up. You also save a lot of money. For me, I am doing this to work out. However, you can do whatever workout method you choose. But for me, I'm practicing 3, 13, 30 or working my way up there. Again, Rome wasn't built in a day. So right now I'm at like 2.8, 11, 30, but I'm going to be at 3, 13, 30. And I want to do that four days a week and then ride one day a week. So ride my horse so that I'm working out a total of five days a week. If you are not familiar with 3, 13, 30, Lauren... I think it was Geraldo made it popular. Might have been Lauren Elizabeth. It's one of the influencers that are named Lauren. It was so long ago now that I, it's kind of slipped from my memory, but one of them popularized it. And it's um, walking at three miles per hour with a 13% incline for 30 minutes. And I want to go above and beyond that. I eventually want to do like 3, 15, 45. But again, Rome wasn't built in a day, so we're just working our way up to it. So that's what I like to do. I feel the best after doing it. I get a better physique after doing it. Like I like 
my body the most and I've been doing it for a while. But do whatever works for you. If you like weightlifting, if you like ab exercises, whatever makes you the happiest, working out is what's important. As long as you're doing some form of activity, then you're gonna glow up and you're gonna improve. So whatever makes you happiest, this is just my preferred way of working out. 30 minutes of sunlight daily. I know this can be hard in the winter because there may not be sunlight and it's cold outside, but if you can get in direct sunlight and be outside for 30 minutes, that's the best way. Maybe knock a couple of these out and go for a walk for 30 minutes outside and you're getting that activity in, you are working out and you're getting that direct sunlight. But no matter what you choose, make sure you are getting some direct sunlight. 30 minutes is the recommended amount by physicians, but whatever you can get in, if you can't get it out there or it's too cold and you just can't do it, definitely sit by a window for at least 30 minutes and that way you are getting that sunlight. It is so good for you. There's a lot of proven research behind it. Look into it if you don't believe me, but 30 minutes of direct sunlight minimum is what is recommended. Understand basic nutrition and eat balanced non-processed food. Your own diet is super, super, super personalized to what works for you. Maybe you're lactose intolerant, maybe you can't have gluten. So definitely eat based on your own personal diet. But a good rule of thumb is balanced non-processed foods. For me, I'm working to be more knowledgeable on what a well-balanced diet consists of, what nutrients you need, how to build that meal, and so forth. So. I'm keeping this very general, but I want you to be more specific. What do you eat that makes you feel the best? What can you remove that doesn't make you feel so great? Look into your diet, be knowledgeable on your diet, be aware of what works for you, be aware of your body when it tells you that it doesn't want something or functions better with something. And this whole thing is about being more aware and knowledgeable on your body and what feeds it and what works best for you. Teeth whitener. I personally use a teeth whitener that I found at Five Below, and it's weird, a little random, but it works best for me. I think it's called Dazzling White. I put it in a podcast episode, like, literally last year. I think it was called, like, inexpensive self-care products or something like that. So I linked it in that one, but teeth whitener is such a big, easy way to improve your appearance and glow up. So I felt like I had to mention it. Definitely make sure that you are whitening your teeth. You can do it every night. You can do it once a night. It, depending on what you get, it'll tell you what's best for you. But I definitely recommend this. It's a quick way to glow up. I'm really weird about my teeth and how white they are. So this is a big thing for me and I highly recommend it. Face rolling. So I think it's called a gua sha. Forgive me if I mispronounce that, but it's the, the one that um, you like rub on your face with face oil. That is so, so good for inflammation. It really reduces it for you. It's technically lymphatic drainage. You do a great routine for it. Um, the person who has the best routine for me is Gracie Norton. If you just look up face lymphatic drainage on TikTok, she has a video about it. And that is the routine that I use. You notice an immediate difference. Your jawline looks snatched. You're getting all that ickiness out of your face. And it is just a game changer. So. Like I said, look that up on TikTok. She'll tell you what tools she uses. She'll tell you how she does it. I use Burt's Bees face oil and that one works best for me, but I do it probably two to three times a week. I could do it more. I'm working on my skincare routine. That's why my face is looking a little out of whack right now. If you're watching, I have like a face mask on and that's why I didn't wear like makeup or anything because we're struggling today. But yeah, I do that two, three times a week. It makes a big difference for me, and I highly recommend adding that to your routine if you want to slim up your face and get all that ickiness out of it. Stick to your skincare routine. Like I just mentioned, I'm working on mine, but consistency is king when it comes to your skincare routine. You can't skip a day. You can't get off track. You just need to stay really consistent with it. So find a skincare routine that works best for you, whether you have combination skin, oily skin, dry skin, whatever works. Find some skincare products that work for you and stick to them. You need to stick to them for probably a couple weeks to a month before you're going to notice a huge difference, but definitely find one and stick to it. That's a big way to glow up because your skin is going to be glowy and happy and it's going to be a huge, huge improvement. So that's what I'm working on right now. My skincare routine was really good and then my face decided to break out because I switched face wash because the face wash I was using, I it wasn't available anymore, like they took it off the market. So I had to switch face washes and now my face is struggling. So 
we're gonna get there. We are in the process of switching it out. Take cold showers. I'm not asking you to take a 30 minute cold shower. I'm talking 30 seconds and then work your way up to like two minutes. It resets your nervous system. It has so many other benefits of doing it for your whole body, your mentality, your physical side of things. Like definitely, definitely start thinking about taking cold showers or cold plunges, whatever you prefer. Cold showers are a little bit easier because you have access to a shower whereas you might not have access to a a cold plunge you could do it in your bathtub but some people have bathtubs some people have showers so it depends on what you have but the improvements are just so good for you and your body so i'm gonna start doing this and you should start doing it with me drink a glass of water first thing in the morning this one gets you off on the right foot it gets already a glass of water in your body and your system i just put mine out before i go to bed and then when i wake up in the morning the first thing i drink is water i know it's lukewarm so some of you may not be a fan of that but it gets the job done for me and i do it before i even get out of bed so it's really important i notice a huge difference already when i'm drinking a full glass of water versus when i don't and i'm like sipping on water throughout the morning also, when you wake up, your body is automatically dehydrated because you haven't drank water for like eight hours or however long you slept. So your body needs it. You may not feel it, you may not realize it, but your body needs water first thing in the morning. So drink a glass of water and help it out. Learn your cycles and hormones and then nourish your body based on what it needs. So be aware of what hormones are happening at what time in your cycle and then make sure you are nourishing your body based on what's going on internally. Which leads me to my next tip, which is cycle syncing. You can cycle sync your meals and you can cycle sync your workouts. Your workouts are a little bit easier to do because once you know what cycle you're on, there's a lot more resources out there to help you understand what is best. There's not as much when it comes to eating because there's not as much research done, but I recommend both. I use the app Clue, which tells me where I'm at in my cycle and I'm still trying to figure it out because I've been off of birth control. It was a year in January, but I was on it for so long that my body is still confused and doesn't know what's happening. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing still. And then once I have a better idea of like where I'm at, that's when I'm gonna start cycle syncing a lot more hardcore. But listen to your body. If it is in a cycle where you may not need to put as much pressure on your body and maybe yoga is a little bit more beneficial for you at that point, then do that. So definitely become more knowledgeable on what's going on and listen to your body. Eight hour minimum of sleep daily. I'm someone who if I get seven hours and 59 minutes of sleep, I'm not okay at all. Like not at all. So I highly recommend uh, finding out what is best for you. Eight hours is like a good solid average that I feel like everyone should strive for. But some people are fine with seven. I wouldn't go much lower than that. I feel like seven to eight hours a night is what is recommended and what would work best. I have to have eight. Some people can go on much less, but I don't recommend it. So make sure you are getting the right amount of sleep for you. Seven to eight hours is probably what I would recommend. But again, I'm not a medical professional. So whatever works best for you. So those are my 19 tips for how to glow up your health and fitness. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys have any other tips that you would add down below if you are on a platform where you can comment. I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely follow me on all my other social media to see how I'm glowing up, how I'm keeping up with this, and what I'm doing to implement these things. I love you guys so, so much. We are glowing up together in 2024, and I'm so excited. I upload every single Sunday and Wednesday. If you're watching this on the Sunday night, it comes out. I hope you have a great night. If you're watching this on any other day, I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, or night. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next podcast episode. Bye.